Hi everybody, in this video we are going to dive deeper into the concept of swamping as well as a related concept called the pseudo-rate constant. Sometimes we want to find the order of a substance. We can measure the concentration over time, manipulate the y-axis such as changing the concentration of A into ln of A or 1 over A and we could see which ones align in order to find the order. This was all from video 9.2 and 9.3. But sometimes, if we have multiple substances changing, the concentration of A won't be the only thing affecting the rate. And we assume that A is the only thing affecting the rate in the integrated rate laws. And because there are other things other than A that are affecting the rate, this means that you might not get a line anymore, since the other substances could also be changing the rate. So, now that you introduce other substances that are changing and affecting the rate, A won't be the only substance that is changing the rate, you will have other substances changing the rate, and because our integrated rate laws only work when one thing, such as A, is changing, then that means that if other substances are changing, these integrated rate laws fail, and since these integrated rate laws are the things that let us form the lines that we use, and if that fails, then that means that we can't use the integrated rate laws if we have more than one substance changing. So how do we combat this? How do we make it so that we can use the integrated rate laws once again to make lines? So scientists know that it is bad for other substances other than A to be changing, since it will not follow the integrated rate laws that we learned in 9.2 anymore. So, because this is bad, scientists like to swamp the reaction with a substance we aren't measuring. So, in other words, the substance that's not A. So that the substance we aren't measuring will barely change in magnitude. By doing this, we can be sure that the change in rate is primarily caused by the change in A. So sometimes these explanations are tricky to understand, so let's actually do an example. Let's just say we wanted to find the order of A in this net reaction. However, the reaction is A plus B becomes C, and the thing is that B might have an order as well, and you will never know. So, both A and B change throughout the course of the reaction, so we don't know for sure if the rate change is caused by the A or B as the reactants are depleted. Therefore, to stop one from changing, we can make the concentration of B be much greater than the concentration of A, so that B will barely change while the only thing changing is A. This way, we can know for sure that rate is impacted only by A, and we can determine the order of A by seeing how A changes over time using a graph, and by manipulating A we can find the order of course. So let's use some numbers to demonstrate this. Let's make B much greater than A. So let's add 0 0.02 molar of A and 5 molar of B. Notice how 5 is much much greater than 0 0.02. Pretend there is one liter, so we essentially have 0 0.02 moles of A and 5 moles of B. Once A is used up, and if we use up 0 0.02 moles of A, then 0 0.02 moles of B will be used, and we will have 4.980 moles of B left. Notice how B is barely changed, because compared to the original value of 5, 4.98 is only 0.996 of 5. So, this means that the rate barely changes. It might change by 0.996, but that is so close to 1 that you can essentially assume that it is not going to change since anything multiplied by 1 stays the same. So because the concentration of B essentially stays constant, then the rate change is primarily due to A going from, for example, 0 0.02 moles to 0 0.01 moles, which is 0.5 of the original, so the rate will be 0.5 to the x of the original, where x is the order. Or perhaps a might go from 0.01 to 0.001, and that's 10% of the original, so you can 
pretend that the rate might be 10% of the original as well, which shows you how changing A can decrease the rate by a lot while changing B does not do anything. So essentially, B is a constant. Now, where does the pseudo rate constant come into play? A rate constant is a pseudo constant when it includes the real rate constant, K, and the concentration of a substance, and there might be more than one substance, that is essentially non-changing, such as B in the problem above. And B can be considered essentially a constant. So normally you would have a reaction such as K times A to the X times B to the Y. So this would be the rate law and you don't know what X and Y are. Now we know that K is going to be a constant and we considered that B will essentially be constant since it won't be changing that much as we just talked about. And because of that, we can pretend that B to the Y is actually a constant. So we can make the pseudo constant K prime be equal to the normal rate constant K times the concentration of B to the order Y. So we can substitute these two for K prime and we get that the rate is equal to K prime times the concentration of A to the X. So now, as you can see, we are only focusing on the substance A and we're not focusing on anything else. And because we're only focusing on the change in A, then that means that we could potentially find the order of A by graphing the concentration of A versus time. So this is how the pseudo rate constant can really help us do these things. Now, before we continue, let's read up and review our first order reaction. So we know that a first order reaction is rate equals K times the concentration of A to the first. And we know that the integrated rate law is going to be this. And doing some simplification or some expansion in this case, we can get that the ln of A, and you could put the F there if you want, but I'm not going to put it there. So the ln of A is equal to the ln of A initially minus KT. Now this is T and this is going to be ln of A. So as you notice, this is in the form Y equals MX plus B. And notice how for the graph, when you graph this, the slope will be negative K as shown here and the y will be ln of the concentration of A, and our x will be t, and we will have a y-intercept of ln of the initial concentration of A. So let's now talk about how pseudo-rate constants apply to this. So with the pseudo-rate constant, we actually at first have two substances at first order, but one substance is swamped so because it is swamped, it becomes constant. So it means that B is a lot greater than A in terms of concentration. Or in other words, the reaction is swamped with excess B. So essentially, we ignore B since it is a constant. So if we ignore B and turn it into the pseudo rate constant when you combine it with the regular rate constant, then you actually get a first order reaction. So rate is equal to K prime times A. And notice how this looks just like rate equals K times A. And we remember that the slope of the graph is negative K. So if this is K and the slope is negative K, then what is the slope if this is K prime? Then the slope will be negative K prime, right? And we know that K prime is equal to K times the concentration of B. So if you have a graph and you know that you are using a pseudo constant, then you can actually solve for the concentration of B if you are given the normal rate constant K and the pseudo rate constant K prime. So that's just some cool things that you could do. Now what if you are a brave person and you decided not to use a pseudo rate constant? So let's just say that A and B are first order and if you aren't going to use a pseudo rate constant, we are actually including B now. So the reaction overall is now 
second order. So it's not first order as we did before. We are now dealing with a second order reaction with two substances, which is much more complicated. But if you remember from video 9.2, we actually found a way to graph this into a line, which is even cooler. But the big problem is that it's 10 times more complicated. And because of that, scientists usually like to use pseudo rate constants because for the first part, this only works when A and B are first order. So if they're not first order, this equation fails and you have to do calculus to find the integrated rate law for things that are not first order. And that's really, really complicated. So instead, scientists decide to use the pseudo rate constant in order to get a simpler graph. So for example, in this part, notice how you only have one substance and having one substance is a lot easier to deal with than having two or more substances. So that's all I wanted to do for this video. Have a nice day, everybody.